How's your faith this morning? Good. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's, let's have faith. Yes. We've called upon our God who has given us promise after promise that He will be there with us and go through what we go through with us. Let's have faith that, uh, that that's going to happen. Amen. I just thought to, I might mention to you if you notice the uh, Christ candle in front here, and you know that we light that every every Sunday morning, uh, representing the light of Jesus. But you may be noticing something else right now: the fact that it's uh, it's getting shorter. Now that doesn't mean the light of Jesus is getting any shorter. What it really brings to us who understand what's going on. Uh, that the church calendar is coming to the end and then the new church calendar will begin which it will begin that first Sunday of December this year as we celebrate that first Sunday of Advent then leading up four weeks to Christmas time and it will then relight the Christ candle after those four weeks on uh, Christmas Sunday and uh, that again will represent that birth of Jesus and that light coming into our world. Um, some of you who don't care about picture type stuff, uh, then maybe that doesn't mean a lot. For me, I, I pictures are what, what speak to me, see, visual. And so uh, um, when I see the light of Jesus portrayed even in a candle, it goes right to my heart. And I hope it does to, to, to yours as well. Once a king had a great highway. And this highway was built for the members of his kingdom. And after it was completed, but before it was open to the public, the king decided to have a contest. And uh, he invited everyone to participate. And their challenge was to see who could travel the highway the best. Remember that. Who could travel the highway the best. Now, on the day of the contest, the people all came. And, and some of them had fine chariots, and some had fine clothing or fine hairdos, or great food even. Some young men came in their track clothes and ran along the highway. People traveled the highway all day, but each one, when he arrived at the end, com complained to the king that there was a, a large pile of rocks and debris left on the road at one spot. And, and this got in their way and it hindered their travel. Well, at the end of the day, a lone traveler crossed the finish line, very worn out, and walked over to the king. He was tired and dirty, but he addressed the king with great respect and handed him a bag of gold. He explained, your Majesty, I stopped along the way to clear a pile of rocks and debris that was blocking the road. And this bag of gold was under it all. And I want you to return it to its rightful owner. And the king looked at him and replied, You are the rightful owner. Well, the travel, traveler replied, Oh no! This is not mine. I, I've never known such money. Oh yes, said the king. You've earned this gold. For you won my contest. He who travels the road best is he who makes the road smoother for those who will follow. And today, I want to suggest to you that to make the road smoother for those God wants you to minister to, you have to step into the house. You have to step into the house. Let me explain that to you. I want you to take a look at this slide. And I want to ask the question, are you on the porch or in the house? As beautiful 
is that porch looks I want to suggest to you that you need to be in the house. Take your Bibles. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Our text for today. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Here's what it says. Since we have these promises, Dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Remember I suggested and mentioned to you earlier that we've been focusing on holiness, sanctification, living a Christ-like life, Living a life where we truly follow Him. If you remember, I think it was last week, we talked about cheap grace. And the fact that it just seems like in our world today that we are, being, we are becoming sacrif uh, we're sacrificing to the thought of cheap grace. As wonderful as salvation and forgiveness of sins is. And what a perfect, free gift from Jesus it is. If that's where we stop, we are missing it, my friends. Amen? Amen. If we stop there. Well, let me, let me share why I would say that to you as we, as we go through this. You see, I think it's pretty clear that God wants us to be holy. That He's righteous. It means upright in His standing, in His view. But what is holiness? That's an old word, kind of. What, what is it to be holy? Well, I kind of like the word Christ-likeness. Right. Christ-likeness. In other words, being like Jesus. Now, do we have a lot of examples of what that would be like? Go to, go to your Bible and go about two-thirds the way in. And get to Matthew and start reading. And you'll see plenty of places where it shows you what it's like to be like Jesus. There was a church leader, after answering this way, that world peace and international understanding is the world's most urgent problem. So that's what he said the world's most urgent problem was. World peace and international understanding. And then he wrote this. I think it was published in a newspaper. He said, we may sweep the world of military, militarism. We may scrub it white of dictatorship. We may carpet it with democracy. We may hang on the wall pictures of freedom. We may spend all our effort to make the world a paradise. And yet, if we do not change the heart of man, from being deceitful and desperately wicked, we can expect the world to be the same after maybe a few days of peace. Did you get that? You see, my friends, our government will not give us the answers we need to our problems. The only answer is changed hearts and lives through the one who gave his all to us, Jesus Christ. Right, he alone brings new life through his saving grace and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we, the church, must become a holy people. Amen. So, let me share three reasons why we, the church, should be holy people and become Christ-like. One, Holiness is really needed in today's world. Duh. Would you agree with that? Holiness is really needed in today's world. It is the church that has the truth for our world today. Even if they don't want it or believe it, the church is what has the truth. The world can give us all kinds of ways to change people, to, to make them better. You know, we've heard all those things. 
But my friends, it's the grace of God going deeper that has the real power to change a person inside. It's God's power as we go deeper that that happens. It, it is holiness of heart, which if believed and experienced and practiced, gives us what the world, with all it has to offer, what the world can never give. Today, crime seems to be at its worst ever. And the government's only answer is bigger and better law enforcement, more prisons and stiffer penalties. And that might help a little. But my friends, it is only through changed hearts that we can truly deal with this evil that's in our world. Let's look at our families. If everyone were living according to a holy heart, how different things could be. How many marriages could be saved if, if, if both involved lived a Christ-like life. How, how much pain could be averted from the children? We live that way. And how about the problem we face with, with misbehavior in our youth culture? We complain about that a lot, don't we? And I'm probably guilty of that too. And our answer, you know, now seems to be, oh, it's, it's all because of poverty and discrimination and, and drugs and lack of education. And, and that might be somewhat true. But needless to say, we spend billions of dollars of our taxes to help correct this with seemingly very little results. See, money does not fix it. Amen. Money does not create a loving heart. That's what we need. Loving hearts. Amen. Loving hearts are going to fix probably almost everything that we, we deal with. But when young people find Jesus, my friends, their hearts and lives can be changed. And then their behavior is different. Wow. When our lives are directed by a heart that is holy, we see self-discipline. If, if our heart is holy, Nothing else can possibly happen except self-discipline that comes out because of that Holy Spirit that is living within us. And then money is not wasted on worldly things. And those who follow God honor God with their financial giving and their responsibilities. They honor Sunday as God's day and make worship a priority. Amen. I don't want to preach to the choir here. I understand that. You're here. That holy people honor Sunday. And honor it as a day to worship. And to be, be, be in God's house. Holy people also encourage others to help others. To be a servant. They're fair in their business. And pure and trustworthy in their relationships. And guess what? Holy people do not look down on those who are different by race or social position or gender. I'll right. just say right. Amen. Amen. Come on. They want everybody to be treated fairly. Right. Holy people. And holy people encourage people to live peacefully. Peacemakers, I like that out of the blesseds, right? Blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemaking has to do with a holy person being able to do that around others. You see, the holy heart knows that the only true peace comes from knowing Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Doctors and others can help with the problem and offer solutions to find peace, but only through God can we truly Get rid of the guilt. And my friends, I, I, I hate to just slip past that and keep going. Because let me tell you, the guilt is where it's at. The guilt has to go, and it only goes because of the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing that in our hearts when we ask for His forgiveness. Both that salvation